I'm Jonah Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to take a deeper dive into Drum Machine Designer to see just how amazingly flexible this instrument is. What I've got here is a four bar groove, um, and let's just have a listen to it before we go any further. If you want to see how I made this groove, that's available in a separate video. But what we're going to do now is to begin to see what we can do once we actually get under the hood of the Drum Machine Designer instrument itself, rather than simply configuring the step sequence pattern, which is triggering these individual hits. So what is a Drum Machine Designer instrument? Well, let's just close the sequencer down so we're not looking at that. And what we're going to do instead is to simply open up the track stack, which a Drum Machine Designer instrument is. So what do I mean by that? Okay, so imagine a drum machine and imagine that every single one of the sounds that it can produce has got its own layer through your mixing desk. It's got its own channel where you can add effects, you can control its volume, its pan position, but what you can also do is to configure the actual sound that's playing um, the individual track itself as well. So in other words, each individual drum sound is like a mix layer in its own right. And in logic speak, we call that a track stack. It's a, an auxiliary group into which lots of different channels are assigned so that they can be processed independently. And then at the last minute, they can all be processed together. So let's see how that works. So this pattern at the top, you can see on this track, is then feeding down to all of the potential tracks which exist within this track stack. And when I press play, we'll see that obviously the kick shows up on the kick channel, and the snare shows up on the snare channel, and all of the other sounds show up on their relative channels. So if I solo the kick, I can see that just that sound is coming through that track. And we can see that even more clearly if I open up the mixer and we can see how all of these individual sounds are assigned. So here is the kick, which is this channel here. And I can see straight away it's volume. I can see that it's not being panned. It's got its own label. I can see that it's got the potential to be sent to two separate auxiliary groups here as well for effects. One of those is reverb and one of them is delay. I can see those over here. I can also see that the sound that's actually triggering the kick sound is within the sampler here. And then I've got a couple of insert effects on just this channel. And if I want to, I can add any more I like. If I wanted the kick to pass through its own distortion plugin, I can do that by simply adding more effects here. All of these sounds are then routed through to the actual drum machine designer input itself. So this track here is all of those drums folded back into the mix. Now, what that means is that all of those drums come back to this place and any effects that I put on this track are going to affect everything. If I put a reverb on this track, every single drum would pass through that reverb before coming to the speakers, for instance. So let's see what happens if I decide that firstly, I want to think about configuring the actual sound of one of the pieces of this kit. Let's choose the snare. I'm gonna to come to the snare track, which is here. And the moment I do that, I can see that the library over here on the left hand side updates. Now, rather than allowing me to choose an entire kit, I've now got, got the option to go through and just swap out this individual kit piece. If I look down through the list, I can see that obviously the snare I'm using at the moment is the one from the kit that I'm using, which is called Birdland Calls. But in real time, what I can do is to press play and audition some other sounds and swap the snare drum sound whilst retaining all of the other kit pieces. Okay, so I like this Midtown Summer snare, and so I've swapped that piece out, and I can go through all of the other sounds one track at a time and audition different variations as well, immediately allowing me to make lots of different changes to individual kit pieces if I want. And of course, I can do that not just for the drums, but for the tuned elements, like the pianos within this track as well, or the bass line.
But what I can also do is to actually open up the Drum Machine Designer interface and begin to make changes here too. So this is what the interface looks like, and I'll just close the mixer behind it so we can see this more clearly. So here is the interface, and obviously the snare sound that I have just swapped is here, and I can see its name is here, and I can click on this sound, um, and I can then see controls for it. And really what I've got is three pages of control per instrument. So the snare itself is here, and I can trigger it from my keyboard here, and obviously the pattern is going to trigger it as well. So straight away, the final page, or the first one that we're actually looking at, but the last of the three as uh, the um, Drum Machine Designer interface sees it, are what's called pad controls. And these give me sort of macro style control over different elements of the sound. So for instance, I could play the snare and change its pitch. I can also change um, elements of the way that the tone of the sound behaves. So I can cut the top end out. I can add distortion. Or I can increase the transients, the sort of attack point of the sound and how hard we hear those transients to start with. So the sound sort of becomes snappier. I can also introduce reverb on this sound. I can adjust its volume. And I've got a, a bunch of controls there that allow me to configure the way that that instrument works. Now, just to see how the interface interacts with the track stack that we were looking at before, let's just open up the mixer again, and I'll show you one individual thing here, which shows you how this works. If we come to the snare track, which is here, and if I decide that I want to adjust the reverb level, you can see that in the mixer behind it, the auxiliary send to the reverb is being adjusted. In other words, within Drum Machine Designer, I've got a chance to control reverb. And if I didn't have this interface open, I could do it here. But within the interface, I don't need to be toggling constantly between the Drum Machine Designer interface and the mixer in order to add reverb to the snare. I can do it in one place or the other. It doesn't make any difference. But obviously, within this control display, what that means is that I can go from one sound to the next and adjust reverb or delay the other auxiliary within uh, the uh, mixer setup, and I can go piece by piece to make uh, control changes. But if I want to have more control over this sample, then I've got the option to do that on the other two pages that exist here too. The Q sampler main page, the quick sampler, and um, its detail page. So within the main page, I can see the actual sample that's been loaded here. I could actually drag and drop and place a different sample here if I wanted to, but there are some other things that I could do. If I wanted to reverse the order in which the uh, sound is playing back, the moment it's playing forwards, I could reverse it. So that's the first thing that I can do. And actually, having now clicked on this snare track by itself, if I now audition this sound from my keyboard, I'm just playing this one sound across the entire keyboard range. So its original pitch is here on A2, because I can see the root key is mapped to A2. So if I then come into the Q Sampler detail page, I can actually go further with the way that this sound is being configured. So for instance, I could engage the filter section within this sound, and I could adjust the brightness of the sound, or I could swap this out for a high pass filter if I wanted only the high frequencies to be heard and not the low end. I can obviously make the filter resonant if I want to. I can adjust pitch here as well. And what I could also do would be to in, uh, introduce um, envelopes from the amplifier or from the filter and have those applied to the sound here as well. Now remember, we're just talking about the snare drum. So, so far we've established that I could drag and drop in a different sample. I can come to the Q sampler page and adjust all kinds of things about the way that the snare behaves. And we can also see that within the pad controls, I've got a chance then to take these macro controls and adjust the way that this snare behaves in the context of all of the other sounds and balance it against those two. And I've got this control for every single sound within the track stack that is a drum machine designer um, production, if you like. The drum machine designer is the instrument, and behind that, all of these pads, all of these individual sounds have got a world of possibility going on within them. And if all of that is something that you prefer to work within a mixer uh, arrangement to configure, well, fine. You can come to the mixer, you can open this up, you can add individual effects, 
per instrument. And of course, you can add sort of grouped effects to the Drum Machine Designer stack um, itself if you want all of those sounds to benefit from the same treatment. If I wanted a distortion on all of the sounds here, I could simply set up that plugin and all of the sounds would pass through it. So what we've done within this video is to take a much deeper dive into exactly how Drum Machine Designer works. So we've seen that we can add individual details to every single uh, track, whether that's the volume of every individual sound, the pan position, adding insert effects, or setting up new auxiliaries for every sound as well. So clearly, Drum Machine Designer is an unbelievably flexible instrument. Yes, Immediate allows us to work with a sort of core group of sounds, but every single one of those details can be changed. And remember, the place that we started here was simply by selecting the snare, opening up the library, and selecting a different snare sound. If what you want to do is to configure a kit of your own, one sound at a time, that's a great place to start.